I think we've lost out to some more popular workshops. What's the last place I looked as well? The Sorry? Yes, the room was more yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. But everybody else does seem to be in workshops when I just walked down. So hopefully we'll work with their feet and walk out of the other workshops because uh, this might be part of that. I'll make a start because I just really want to get a discussion going on. I've got a bit of a reputation now at these um, events for doing um, presentations about things I know absolutely nothing about and just sort of trying to see what happens. I do know something about this one, but I don't necessarily know the solution or the answers. So really what I want to do is pose some questions and then just see if we could have a bit of a, whatever you now call a brainstorm, to, um, to try and solve it. The problem as I see it is this. Me and a chap called Ken Eastwood, who's around somewhere, organised one of these for Yorkshire and Humber. Um, I was going to say a couple of years ago, but Ben corrected me earlier, so actually it was last summer. And in many ways, it was a really successful event. Um, it was good fun, got lots of people there. But on the other hand, it was a bit of a failure. It was a failure because my goal as a former frontline worker was to try and get frontline workers who were engaging with technology to come along. And Ken, as a senior manager, had the goal of getting really senior managers, chief execs, directors, that kind of level of person there. And both of us failed at that. Now, there's various possible reasons for that. One could be marketing, though I think he did a relatively good job on that. Um, one could be the timing, like this, we did it on Saturday. Um, Saturday's great for the people who are really passionate about it, but not for others, perhaps. Ah, there's more coming in. Big guns in the room. He nap. Yeah. That was our first thing. Yeah, you missed that. Yeah, it's repeating my funny jokes. You know. <laughs> I've made a career out of it. <laughs> and sadly, I'm here for a nap. Right, well, yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, we picked the right room. Now, I was just sort of saying, we organised local gov camp a few years back, and in some ways it was very successful. So it was a good day, lots of really positive discussions, but in some ways it was a failure because my goal was to get lots of frontline workers who weren't necessarily engaging with technology to come along and explore them. And Ken wanted to get the really senior managers and the SMT along. And in those, in that way, we kind of failed. And these events are great, but every time we go here, there's a lot of comms people, there's a lot of techie people, and there's Dave and Nick. And that seems to be how we're moving on. And maybe we need to have the people who have the power, who can make the decisions, who can have what people like to call management buy in, I hate words like that. Um, or maybe we need to have the frontline staff who um, who are actually going to be using a lot of the technology on the ground. And in some cases, like what Nick does, you're kind of frontline and senior management, the voluntary sector side of things, but in the council's office, it's more like that. So I was sort of thinking we could have a discussion around that. And then when I was pitching it, as you probably heard, somebody shouted out quite rightly, well, actually, do we want any of these people in? <laughs> at all, or do they just sort of ruin it? And, you know, you have to think to yourself, what's the point? Are we coming here for a laugh? Um, are we coming here to explore things amongst professionals? Or are we coming here because we actually want to change things? And for me, it's very much the latter. I feel very frustrated. I mean, I don't work in um, local government at the moment, but I work with local government in the public sector. And it's very frustrating how slow the pace of change goes and how if local government doesn't have buy-in, it doesn't matter what the frontline staff want. So I work with learning providers and I have learning providers who really want to be engaging their learners through Facebook, but, looking at me, um, but they're told by the bods at the top of their council that they can't do that. It's against policy. So that is a solution that some people might do. but. From a comms point of view, and as a former comms person, I really worry about people doing things completely under the radar because there's absolutely, it's not control that I think there needs to be, but I do think there's a lot of people who experiment with social media and it goes wrong, and that can be very dangerous in the public sector. So, how do we go about this? That's really what I wanted to ask, and then I wanted to sit down and have a nap. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you talk about it. If I knew it was that easy, I'd do the sessions. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It's my first time. Would it be useful to see where people are coming from? 
want to spec. They yeah. come from different places. Okay. Um, I, I don't mind I don't mind first. I mean, we run events and conferences, you know, for a living. And when, when we, uh, I've been to a couple of these things now. I think to get the sort of senior management here, there needs to be more structure. And that sort of goes against the grain of what non conference is. But I think if you, if you want senior management here, there needs to be at least aims and objectives. You can still have the, you know, come up with sessions and that sort of thing. But it's, you know, to, to from the off, define, you know, some output. That, you know, if you come to this, you're going to get this. Um, because, I mean, to be fair, you know, we went out last night and that sort of thing. I think a lot of people consider this as a, a nice networking activity, but it is the same people. You know, for someone to say, do we want them, you know, do we want other people here? You need other people here. It is the same, it's the same faces. And it'd be interesting to see in three months' time, if you asked everyone at 10 today, what have you actually done? Has anything come out of it? Which I don't think, I mean, do you do that on the, on the local government website? No. You get any of that sort of but it is the whole purpose of an unconference is remorseless informality. It's so you know one of the rules of an unconference is who's here is here. Yeah. Right, people's. And it doesn't mean that what you're saying is how do we get these messages of this culture yeah. under the noses of yeah. a different group of people. Yes. Can I be here is about kind of the mindset rather than actually about here because it you know about about changing the thing. I'm sorry. Yeah. I think it's quite easy because I think the, the informality is about learning between different groups of people. You just sell it in a different way. What have councils got to do now is they need to work much closer with uh, voluntary sector, local citizens, and uh, private sector, which which is what you generally have. So you call it what you know. That's the thing at the moment. So you can call it co-production or social. You can call it anything, but that using the buzzwords is what would get uh, senior managers. But you want to get them here because. They want to be here. Yes. And not, the, not one of the good things I think from, about doing these on a Saturday is that you do get people who are passionate about it because they're going to be on a Saturday. And I've done a couple of other conferences, one in education and be involved in one that's um, in local government, well, shop camp and local learn part, both of which have been on a weekday, and both of which have had attendees who have been told to be there. And on the one hand, that worked really well at Shop Camp. There was a bit of a confrontational atmosphere to a point, um, not just against Andy Bannon and the Jets and him and stuff, but, um, but uh, also against, um, again, there was people there who were sceptical, I think that's fair to say. Which is handy. Thank you. It was. It was. It was good. Um, that said, there were some people who didn't really want to be there. I think it certainly when we did learn pop, there were some people who weren't sure at all that they really wanted to be there. But you've got to be savvy, you've got to talk, yeah. who do you want? I would say, you've talked about communications, social media is not about communications. Communications in local authorities is about PR and selling a message, not necessarily what others want to hear. So that's the wrong, that's the wrong bit. The people are going to be more receptive than the ones that work in front facing services, around community development, empowerment, engagement, that's, so it's, it's about knowing who you want to get friends with, and then tell them, then they would come that way. So I think it's it's who you want. And actually, I I've come with lots of hats, but I am a senior manager. I do have power. I do have clout, and I do have money. You say where you've come from. So. Uh, but that's been that's quite an interesting journey, mainly because of the work that I've done with Nick. And Nick's useful. If she came along, and I thought, well, it'd be useful if I. So I think it's about being quite savvy about who you, who you have a relationship with in your different areas of the country and work that you do, and who is the best person you can, because you want somebody who will go back and say, do you know what, to their colleagues at senior management, level, it's really interesting, it's useful because it's about a different way of working, this is how we're going to have to work, get out of your office, go and talk to real people, see how it will change. So I think it's about... Uh, isn't, isn't, isn't there a wider cultural issue here? Because I think that these days I get much more out of an interactive thing like this and coming along and you know sharing ideas and all that sort of stuff. Whereas senior managers will probably pay two or three hundred quid to send one, someone to sit in a serried row listening to speakers, which you know that's where you want to get your nap, Nick. I, well, I don't, that, I don't that really that turns me off. I think it depends on the person, and the speaker. Well, and yeah, it does, but 
um, you know, I, I think that most people, you know, maybe a personal point of view, but most people get more out of a more interactive approach than they do just sitting, listening to talking yeah, heads. Yeah, and it depends completely who it is who's speaking as well. I mean, we had Bill Thompson at our conference on Thursday. It was, wasn't particularly interesting for me, to be perfectly honest, because mm. what he was saying was something, stuff that I'd gone for a long time. But there were a lot of things teaching me. You know, a lot of people in the audience who didn't think that, he found it immensely. And that was really good. But you're stereotyping senior managers. That no, but, 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 but no, what I'm, what I'm there saying is... There are senior managers yeah. who, do want to, who know it will work. Well, so it's, it, yeah. And who wants to work in this environment yeah. and find it very refreshing and no, innovative. I, I agree. I thought it was a personal point of view. And it's about find, being smart and, and, and working yeah. out who those people are who can send you a mess messages. But what, what I think I was saying was they're more likely to commit budget to sending people to those, those sort of... Well, yeah, well, that's it. Well, so, and I've written about this several times. Do you think the fact that it's a completely free conference is a selling point? Well, I, I've written about this, and a lot of the comments I get are, yeah, but there's a long way to go before they'll be convinced this is, you know, they'd rather do nothing than do this. I wouldn't make it free. I think you need to put some cost on it, but not a, not a huge amount. Because it isn't free, is it? It's no. Not somebody. This value some cost, money. this value is cost yeah. something, isn't it? <laughs> but, but they didn't spend anything on the Wi-Fi. We, we, we were struggling with the problem of um, inside local authorities or, or, um, or public sector organisations, there are geeky people who get open data and you always end up in the same room together. And so what we actually did for speed data was we approached sort of five or six of them and just said, we want to run a very small event and we want you to go and find the senior manager in your organisation that needs to get this and use the weight of your personality and your trust in the organisation to say, please just come along, it could be worth your while. And we fed them, and it was only two hours long, but we actually got a senior manager with enough power and a geek. And they went away, both with, with renewed respect. It, the, the manager suddenly understood what they'd been bashing on about. They saw other managers who were, who were also nodding, going, this makes sense. And that was really, really carefully targeted to a particular geeky individual, go and persuade somebody to come, please. No, um, we're we we at it now, next practice. Yeah. We it's it's our danger, though, with that, I think, is that I've, in, in learning, I've come across several providers where there's a geeky person who everybody knows is very innovative and everybody knows has good ideas, but they're often seen as people who's coming as well. And when they come and say, I've just been to this on conference, it's been really, really good, they say, yeah, but last week, we were on the internet, so now that's good. <laughs> So, you know, we no, and, that, and that was about getting them in yeah. the same room, and, and so, so they were experiencing the same thing. Um, and, you know, one of the organisations I know is about to do mad stuff as a direct result of that. Um, but that, you know, that worked on a small scale. It doesn't necessarily, and it's sort of a little bit like what you're talking about, isn't it? You're, 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 you're here partly because I'm, I'm saying, come on, it'll be worth it. But it is worth it. You lose cannons of yeah. social innovators in mm. the local authority, the entrepreneurs, yeah. the civic entrepreneurs, yeah. and what is needed, the intermediaries, to, to enable a local authority to actually practice what it preaches. I can only talk about Birmingham. Birmingham talks about itself as being enabling and empowering, but hasn't changed any of its structures about how it delivers services, or its very um, dry way of communication through the website, which is always got that. So, if it really wants to do its key objective, it needs those yeah. those people and to give them some direction. So they're not loose cannons, they're actually being very, very useful inside a, a, a big organisation. And, it, and it won't, it's not bang theories, it's not going to happen overnight. Right. But you will begin to get ripples where some things begin to change. And then when it gets accoladed, it gets a bit of national press or it's seen as being really useful, then people say, actually, this social media malarkey and giving a bit, it works, it's given us a bit of kudos. So then there will be, you'll instead of two people coming, you might get five people who come the next time. Or say, so can we run a session on how we change around? So I think it will take time, but I, I do think it's around. Do you I think the, the whole idea that it's a bit wacky, that this unconference idea where you don't have an agenda, is actually off putting to me. The idea that it's about technology, you go, oh god, yeah, it's a social, social media, we all know we've got to be on Twitter. But it doesn't have to be about technology, does it? No, no, no. It could be about that's, anything. That's part of the problem. It needs to be relentlessly focused on the, the actual the 
reason for technology and yes. the purpose of it, and it's always going back to that rather than this is a new innovative idea and you should all get yourselves on Twitter and um, it's kind of the new thing out there. But it's not so how do we package that when, when we email chief execs? So if we look at GovCamp, Ken managed to arrange for all the chief execs of pretty much every council to get an email about it. How do we package that so that people can understand what an unconference is and want to come? I don't think you can get an email. Um, it has to all be about the relationship and you have to have people who are going to be, who are going to pitch up at someone's door and say, you should come, but not in a, you should come to this because it's great, but in a much more continuous dialogue. So, in Hull, where I've been for two and a half years, it's been horrible, really. But over the last 18 months, Eddie, who's Sudograph, who's here now, when I was in, working in the web team, and it was dreadful, and everyone said, no one cares, no one wants to do it, there's no buy-in, there's no anything. I sort of thought, well, does anyone connect with the people who might change that? Sat down with Eddie, Eddie was like, this is good. He came to GovCamp in January, he's here today. He is now the head of comms. And there is now stuff happening, and the corporate director of business support is he and she and he have a great relationship, and they're keen. I think she wants to come probably because Eddie has that relationship with her. And as you, the point you made, it has to come out with people sitting around the table and saying this is good because not come to this because it's great. We had a great time. GovCamp is really interesting because you get the UK GovCamp. You get you do get a senior mixture of very senior yeah. civil servants and, and John and me, <laughs> which is just weird. Um, and so, uh, and the, you know the, that cultural change that they the experience they get from being immersed in that cultural change sort of has ripple on ripple on ripple on basically. I think that's I don't know why that is actually. What well, you could do is a bit of an analysis of come today because I think it's a double attack on two fronts, isn't it? Um, what would be really useful after today is see who, if you've got people here from the local authorities and their names and have, and then for the next send an email to the chief exec, but mention the person who came and also tell that person and, and then get try and get that so it's not cold call, it's kind of is, but you've you've also got somebody there and see if it has. And not kind of at the at the next one. I think that's a good idea, actually. Um, so that You've got to be slightly careful because there's some people who try and come here under the radar um, from their local authority. But you'd have to get the permission to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think also demonstrating output. You can demonstrate to senior managers that this is what has come out of attendance yeah. at book camp. You know, we've saved X by working with such and such. We wouldn't have met them if we hadn't come to this camp. Yeah. Okay. okay. So yeah, I mean, it is interesting, isn't it? So. I think part of the problem is, I mean, it's a bit like the objectives thing, is actually what are the objectives of this event? There are none. Yeah. And, you know, so there's nothing to measure against. And, you know, if anybody asks me to define what it is that we're trying to achieve, well, the answer would be nothing. Uh, followed up by, it's kind of just a group hug for everyone yeah. to get together. That's, that's what it is. And I think that, um, but clearly people like it for that reason, uh, because the numbers keep going up. Well, the type of person. Yes, and um, the numbers keep going up. So we are getting new people here every time. Because as I say, you know, there are twice as many people here than the last time we did it. Um, and I suspect that if you suddenly injected 20 chief execs or directors into it, it would change the dynamic of the event. You're not going to get the chief execs. Well, no, no, well, possibly not. But, but you know what I mean. You know, it would change the dynamic and it probably people might well feel uncomfortable. But as Nick said, almost by a process of Osmosis. I mean, the big one, the national one, we do usually in January in London. We've been going out for four years, and we are getting those senior people starting to pull up. But they're coming because they want to. They're coming because they've heard there's this cool thing happening, and they want to be a part of that. And so we're not, we can't, and nobody's asked them to come. So it was quite funny actually. So the big guy that we sort of had coming in January was Chris Chant at the time, just been appointed to be head of digital for all the government. So it's quite a big thing. And I got emails from people who come now. And actually, I did, I did say, well, they didn't sign up for a ticket to come yeah. And um, they, they said, um, to speak. yeah, and they said, you know, if they'd like to have a session on this, I said, well, you can pitch it, and people turn up, <laughs> you know. Which is, which is right. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. Yeah, you know, they were quite happy with that in the end. And I think that the moment you start fiddling with any of those sorts of things, then I think, because 
Physical that's nature. Set, that's it. That's it. When we did it then on last year, we um, it was partly organised by a chap called um, Rob Wilbot, who was the founder of Research. Um, and he managed to arrange for Chris Brogan, if anyone knows of Chris Brogan on the internet, the bloke, to come over um, to it, which was great. And then, due to a massive accident on the A1M, there was a number of us, including me, organising, um, stranded for three hours on the motorway, couldn't get there. So everything was running a bit late, so we were need to do something. So what they did, for those who were there, they said, tell you what, loads of people want to go to Chris's workshop anyway, let's just have Chris do a talk to the audience. It was very spontaneous, but it worked. And the, the feedback afterwards was, this is really, really good because there was this motivational talk, if you like, at the beginning before we all went in. Now, you were there, weren't you, John? I was one of the people who turned up late because I was in a different accident, actually, not the main one. <laughs> but two reasons. One, one is I was having the plaster removed from my broken toe, oh, yes. and then I got involved in it. Well, you know, the feedback was very accident. good, but I'm just, it's interesting because I don't think keynotes are compatible with other conferences. But it clearly did work. And in the same way that you were saying about aims and objectives, you know, and not making it free, I'll be saying then that the young conference as it is is never going to attract senior management um, type people or unless we change the very ethos of it. No, I don't think that's the case, but they they turn up as yourself, plus all the other things you are, than the things you are. Do you know what I mean? So, senior managers turn up because they're that sort of person. I think it depends on the personality. I, mean, I know, yeah. I'm not going to say who it is because I'm recording this. Um, <laughs> I know a local authority chief executive who gets all this stuff. He tweets, he's on all sorts of social media stuff. He comes to events almost incognito yeah. because he doesn't want, well, his other senior managers don't understand why he comes and are a bit threatened about him coming to things like that. I think it undermines the way things normally run. Yeah. So I think it will change over time. It's about pers people's personalities. As you say, you, know, people, you come here and you bring your personality with you. Some people are uncomfortable with that way of operating. Can I just ask you about you saying that there are no aims and objectives? Yeah. Why do you run GovCamp anyway then? There must be something that's yeah. a, common it's really honest. Honest. a common understanding of what it is. Self-importance, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, my, you know, ego really. <laughs> uh, I, I, honestly, I don't know. It just seems the right thing to do. You know, people seem to enjoy it. And I don't think, it's one of those things, I don't know whether anybody else would do it, but I didn't. So that's kind of how it happens. Um, do, do I think we will transform local government through it? No, I don't. Do I think we, it's a nice for everybody to get together? Yes. And I think that's probably enough. Do you think we could it it contribute to transform it? If you do, oh, yeah, no, I'm sure it will. But, you know, I don't think... Everybody always says, or, no, not everybody, but everyone, a lot of people do say, you know, about things like this. Where's the challenge? Which is very difficult because we're all too busy with cuddling. And, you know, and again, what are the outputs? And generally speaking, there aren't any, because everybody goes away really excited and enthused and motivated, and then they get you know, sort of still wiggly on Sunday, and then they get to work on Monday, and all the press and reality of their lives hits them, and so it all goes. So nothing tends to, you know. But there are, there are probably. <laughs> but that's but thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. But it, that's really yeah. useful because if you're in an organisation where you feel that you're the only person who feels like this and everyone else thinks you're, you're completely mental, yeah, exactly. it's kind of useful. To and that, that's what it is. And I think that there's, there's something about, as sort of Nick said, yeah, it's in the informality of the whole thing. It's almost the sheer pointlessness of the endeavour that makes it worthwhile. You know, I mean, it's an absolute pain in the ass. I make no money out of it whatsoever. I get no work or anything as a result of doing this. I don't think you know, it's a complete waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't still, believe you. I still yeah. do it. I'm sorry. I, no. don't, I don't believe that in us. I'm really there is, um, we wouldn't do it for that. There must be something. I'm just desperate to be loved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of truth in that. <laughs> <laughs> but I would challenge you because there are things up on the wall, like the thing that, is it the LGI? Mm. Okay. So that, that, that would then be followed up, isn't it? So there is, yeah. you're allowed, you're allowed stuff like that. So you must know what that's for. Okay, when you mention this to Google and Microsoft to get the yeah. offices in London, yeah. um, what do you say? Because surely you don't say, oh, I'm just organising a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just say there's this cool thing, do you want to do it? Yeah. So, yeah. But, 
I'm, I'm a lot more ambitious for this than you, than you are, possibly, Dave, because I actually think that, I mean, just by starting GovCamp, you've now spawned local GovCamp, you know, there are regional events that have been spawned. It, this is a growing movement, and over time there will be a cohort of people who've been to these events who will go back and embed that practice in what they do in the, in yeah. the, the work. I mean, there's a direct correlation. If you talk to Dan Slee, he will say, I go to local GovCamp, I go back to work and new things start happening because I've been given that extra fillet, that extra boost of energy to keep things going. And, and some of the stuff that he, he was just a straight comms officer, then he became, then he started blogging, he started understanding this stuff and he started doing things differently. So I think, I think there are lots of things that happen as a result of it, but the point is to not care. Yes, it doesn't it, matter. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it, it, in the planning, it, it, it's, that, it's that thing about, um, I mean, rightly so, when government's spending our tax money, we want them to think about what's, what we're going to get as a result of it. And government is very poor at letting things happen without anticipating the result in advance. Yes, and it's a bit like, the, you know, so Rob from LGIE, you know, he sort of emailed me and said, can I bring this map along and do this thing? I'm like, well, if you want, fine. You know, and so the way I see it, I think, is that for me, I don't want to be seen to be directing or telling anybody what to do, other than just say, here's the space, do with it whatever you want. I think one of the main outputs I think about is inspiration. A lot of people go away from here inspired, but you can't, it's difficult to measure that, isn't it? I think, but maybe if there was a bit more follow-up and use of that local account website to get people to actually start saying, look, we're talking to such and such. There's loads of conversations take place during the day, and lots of things will happen, but everybody else that's here probably doesn't have the, we all have our own separate conversations. But what needs to happen is those need to be sort of networked, because there'll be loads of opportunities that, that are taking place that, that people are missing out on. But they have their own, they're creating their own opportunities, but other people are creating opportunities. It needs to be maybe better networks and better publicised. But Dave's must say a fair attitude to that. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. And in many ways, again, as you said, you know, there's loads of these things cropping up. But you know, it's very much an Al Qaeda style movement in the, you know, when Kev and uh, did the York, well, I'd absolutely nothing to do with that whatsoever. You know, nobody needs to ask permission to do this, and nobody needs to do any of that stuff. And so. Building any kind, I think the moment when you start looking at objectives or measuring things and follow-ups and actually doing more to promote it than sticking something up on Twitter, you know, suddenly that becomes, you start to build some kind of organisation around something that's frowned and unorganised. As an example, how I feel about the social media socials as well. People will cop up frequently say to them, you ought to do this and you should do that and you should do the other and now you should do this and I just say, no, and they go, why not? Because I cannot be asked. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they work for their simplicity, and the more you expect of them, the faster you break. There's a coordinated movement on Twitter of people putting the kettle on while they listen to the live audio stream of this, by the way. So, you know, <laughs> there's something else we've spawned. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so the answer to how we get other people here is, you know, kind of, I don't know, kind of just a bit, I don't care. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, but I think you're right in that, you know, they're clearly... From my point of view, I do care because I do want to affect change. Yeah. And well, not just well, in the wider society. But is it actually about being yeah. here at events like this or is it actually right. getting That's the mindset the question, of people wanting to change things in organisation? Is it, getting, is it actually getting physically to events like this rather than... Okay. For me personally, it's about getting people to understand that the whole... The whole way we do things is a bit... And someone said at our education conference the other day that the education system in this country is like a boiler. And what we're doing is it's gone wrong. So we've seen, found, found the part that's not working. Um, and we've put a new part in. And then we found another part that's not working. And actually what we need to do is rip it out and put a new boiler in. And <clears throat> while that's a very simplistic way to look at governance, I think we need to be changing the culture within government within society, within community development, within all these different things. And there are things like the social media surgery, which I think is, is challenging that in a totally non-confrontational way. And I think that these events for me, the reason I love this format now is because I can come and I can do a presentation about something I don't know anything about, and we can have a bit of a discussion, I can go away with some thoughts. Whereas if I did this at our summer conference with work, they wouldn't say you can stand up and talk about how we get people here because you're not an expert on that. 
So we need somebody you know, who's got people to, in effect, to come and do a presentation like that. I like this format because it stimulates me to do things and to think about things that are different. And I think that if other people were brought into this dynamic, if assuming the dynamic state and day raises the point that if you've got the different culture of people here, that dynamic would change. I think that if people came to this event as it is, it would change the way people thought. But it's also something about rather than getting viral. people here, yeah. bringing here to, to there, to your organisation. Because in my organisation here, we have these terribly long, dull, boring meetings where nothing gets decided and there's no actions coming out, coming out of them. Yeah, they're supposed to have a point, but they're actually yeah. pointless, whereas this is supposed this to have no yeah. point. <laughs> <laughs> and it is also pointless. Yeah. 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 It achieves everything it says. <laughs> so is there something about kind of moving this way, you know, this way of working being translated into accounts, like how we can, can do that to kind of free people up to actually feel that they can do stuff even though they're not the official experts and that sort of thing? That it's interesting you say that thing. because I'm doing a workshop. But yeah, I mean, no, starting the debate, no, I think that's a valid point, I don't know, but maybe it isn't getting people to lose it. It's just getting those events to there, yes. What do you think about that? Well, there was one thing when you said this is crap, I was going to say, absolutely, it's not crap. I'm not, that's, that's not, the, that, that wasn't the challenge, it was, what, what, what do you want to do, who do you want to influence, if you do want to do that, then it's, it's there something else you need to know. I think you're right. I think that's what I was saying right at the beginning. This way of working is one that is uh, being espoused by local councils as the new way forward. It's about chatting, it's about talking, it's about sharing ideas. And actually, um, that expertise are much more diffuse than just the, lo you know, the local authority worker is the expert. So you do an awful, these do an awful lot. That's what this is about. Um, it's very challenging. I mean, it's good to say even for me, but in my area, we've got it coming and thinking, oh, shit, where am I going to, you know, where am I going to, uh, who do I go and talk to? Oh, I've got to make an effort. I have got to go and talk to people. Um, there's no agenda. What do I do? So uh, um, it's challenging, but actually, um, the way of working is one that uh, we have got this kind of format. It's not distinct from going to a uh, local uh, a, meet, a residence meeting, community meeting in the locality and how you would, you know, we now know you don't go with the set question knowing what the set answer is going to be. Well, we shouldn't. <laughs> we should be going. You know that, I don't think <laughs> <laughs> But it's, so it is the same sort of skills. I just, it depends what you want to do with it. If you don't want to, you know, it's just the name of it is, this one is local gov camp. So is that slightly different from the other? Camps that you've got. Is there something that you, you want to do that maybe that you to even call that? I would challenge that you do want to do some some. Well, okay, so, so where that came from was the original one was a basically from four central government really, and then uh, people got to wind of it and local governments they a lot of them came along, and so and then people just said it'd be really good if we could have one of these just for local governments or for local government things. So it was like, right, it's quite interesting actually, because I did have quite a few people getting in touch saying actually it won't work for them. They won't like it. You know, they want an agenda. Um, and, uh, but it was fine, you know. And, I, and again, I, and I don't want to, you know, appear completely blase about these things, but I think there genuinely is a thing whereby if you start, it's one of those things I think if you think about it too much, I worry that it might just fall apart, <laughs> to be honest with you. And, and it's one of those things I think, if, you know, it just happens. That there is something that doesn't really happen in that film, which is that you get a room full of people who all want to be there. Yeah. Uh, and, and trying to get people here who don't want to be here is a bit, is a bit daft, really. Yes. I mean, that's why it's also, that's why it's on a Saturday, so you can guarantee that people come and actually want to be here. And the other interesting thing about it, actually, is around, I mean, it's, it's a couple of those things in there. One is that, you know, it's a free event. Actually, the number of people who don't turn up is spectacularly small for me. It's incredible. I mean, usually I think people sort of work on about 50% or something like that. But it's really slow. But I think you have to go With this one, you know, only a handful of people don't actually feel like they said they will. Um, which is interesting, I think. But like, and again, I'll just go back to the other thing, though, which is just say, so, well, actually, I think we are getting people here. You know, the one we did in January, there were 200 people there. You know, which was 
twice the size it's happened before. We've got over 150 here today, I think, whereas we were hovering around 100 mark when we did last time. So people are coming, you know, and it's, it seems to be working, and that sort of softly, slowly way of doing it. You know, we are attracting people. Your initial question, when you said it was chief. Yes, the right, it was the right, not people, just people, 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 the people with power. The people with power, all the people. Who actually do it, not just the people yeah. at the top. Yeah. The other thing, though, about power around this, yes, having people at the top getting it enough so that when something goes wrong, they don't go. But actually, what, what's in working with, with Karen, what we found is that the people with power to make these things happen are the people with small enough budgets to make things happen under the radar. The moment you go for big budgets, you get big controls over it and big tizziness. And therefore, it doesn't happen. Um, so, oddly enough, having a chief exec who's, uh, who might understand it and be willing to be okay when the expected problems happen is, is useful. But it doesn't always follow that to get people talking at the neighborhood level, you need to have worked your way up the organization to do a big, expensive project. I, don't think, I think we need the people from the, from the, the, the bottom end of the problem. There's very, very few front line workers. In terms of community development, certainly, and that sort of thing. Like this is not there. Well, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, I'm not. I've had that stuff for years. And one of the good things about LearnBot, just because of the way we marketed it, because of the contact with parents, it did have a lot of frontline workers. And then Rob Wilmot got a lot of private sector people to come along. And actually, that work, that dynamic was in some ways a lot better because we had a couple of principals there from colleges. Bulk of frontline workers and some private sector, and I felt that sort of all blended in. Now, that was just lucky to draw, really, because a lot of people had no idea what it was, and there happened to be a lot of money in education at that point before it disappeared. Mm. So, I think it was tiny and local. Was that national or local? It was marketed local for a national audience, so it did have people from, I say, if you got people from across the north, so we definitely had some people from northwest and from. Because that may be the compromise. You want a national event, like-minded people who you've, you, you, you've come together, but actually there might be something in that, that actually the more local ones, actually there may be a bit more of an object. It is there, how, how, does, that that's a fair point. how does that influence? How does that influence more? Like, and you're more likely then, because uh, 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 people are more likely to, to come. I mean, the challenge, if you ask me, it's not, would you come if it was in London? The because it was in Birmingham, it was close. So that might be a tactic that actually now you've built up your number of people. If it felt that it would be useful, but the next step might be that you wanted to get more local decision makers, that actually there's enough animated key people that you would be able to start to, to would run you come them again. Have you been told you come again? Have you asked me at the end? <laughs> <laughs> when she had a nap. Yeah. I'm not a drunk like the rest of you. It's a sad one. You couldn't get off my bottom. The other thing I would say, the other people that you haven't talked about is councillors. Well, we did a local gov cup. We had a separate session for councillors. Um, which, In um, terms of people. Yeah. Um, Simon Coke, if you follow him, and um, Councillor Tim from Barnes, who organised. Just the fact that those two work together was fantastic. Um, organised a. The 21st Century Council, or is that what Birmingham called call Birmingham? No, that was Modern Council. Yeah, yeah. It was 21st century, 21st century. And that, and I wasn't there particularly, but that went really well. And a follow on to that created a load of resources on the wiki, um, which was maintained for a while through Kurt Lee's council. Um, I should say we have a listener in New Zealand. Say hello, New Zealand. Hello, New Zealand. <laughs> oh, the, the listening is there. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, New Zealand. <laughs> So, you know, New Zealand's a very modern sort of country. Um, <laughs> got a good reputation. How do you, do you have events like this to be modern? <laughs> uh, we'll wait for that to yeah. So I think, yeah, I think you're right that members are really good. And members, of course, affect management quite a lot. If a member says this is something good to go to, I think management, would you agree with that? Depends which member it is. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the other <laughs> I think a bit. I think there's a lot of heads of service that would probably love to come to this, but they just don't know about it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Certainly, the events we've run over the last seven or eight years. I can think 
quite a few, especially heads of customer services, um, guys from Maidstone, guys at Sam Ribble, Ian Parker, would be absolutely amazing. And they would do, and they would do presentations. I just think they just don't know. I think if you've got that chief executive, I think you're right, a dynamic that you go for a person. But I think heads of service, definitely, there, there are a lot of people. Um, and maybe for future ones, we, so obviously we're doing a few bits together, aren't we? We can, uh, we can make certain people, certainly innovators, so not have people come along that wouldn't contribute yeah. and get involved, yeah. that, that would fit in. But then maybe if you have those people attending and maybe they sort of make some noise about it, then maybe the sort of thing starts to spread out. But um, yeah, a room for chief is there, not really my idea. But I think, yeah, I think good parties, it were. I think another issue is this work, work life balance thing. I mean, I, you know, I know that most people are here, all people who are tweeting in the evenings and you know, that sort of thing. And we've had this debate before when I used to really complain about events on Saturdays, but now my kids have grown up and clear off at weekends so I can be here. Um, but I come across a lot of people in the work I do who are, you know, these people who put really rigid boundaries between their work and, mm. and, and their personal life. And when, and when I try to coach them into using social media, what they really don't like about it is it blurs those boundaries. Mm. But um, I think it's fair to say that it's not just social media that blurs those boundaries. Right. Things that are yeah. but, that's, but that's what I say about coming to an event on a Saturday. It won't come to an event on a Saturday because that's, that's personal time. Yeah. And my job requires me to do quite a few overnights. We get, all get upset about that if we tell them we have to do it overnight and some people can't do it because they've got to feed their horses and some people can't do it because they've got to walk their dogs and me. And you know, it all becomes too much. But actually, that I think the way, the way we work now, you know, Tesco's is 24 hour and with that comes a lot of blurring of boundaries. And you could argue that boundaries have been blurred by the way society is, or the way blurring them all. Oh dear. Um, it's that identity <laughs> session later on today, isn't it? That's so, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely into that. Yeah, I think there's a lot. And I think maybe that is a problem there. Maybe, no, I don't know. Is it a stereotype to say that people higher up in management blur them more or less? I'm asking you because you never represent all management. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they're all looking at like me. <laughs> um, I think that's really interesting because I do. I am on Twitter, and I didn't call myself my name in, in the first instance because my role was that I wanted to listen in to some of the community organisations I was working with. If I went to them as a my local authority hat on, I'd be given a different answer to the mm. ones that I see. However, that hasn't worked because people know it's me now. But Nobody has, um, it's, nobody has broken that uh, exchange, that conversation. Actually, community organizers quite like it, that it's me. And I don't, I listen. What I don't do, I tend not to get involved in the debates unless I'm really pissed off. And then I have done. And then I thought, mm, actually, you shouldn't have done that. There were two classic examples. One, Sean, who was supposed to be here, and he's not here, who's standing for the, um, Oh uh, man, uh, he'd said something and I absolutely disagreed with what he said and got in. I thought, no, I perhaps I shouldn't have done that. But I'd done it on my Twitter. So I think that blurring of boundaries is actually quite useful because the way of working for local authority staff is they are not the expert, they're not going to be the sole deliverer, and actually can't deliver to them. And actually, that local people see that you're actually a local resident, you live there, you use the services, etc. It's not a negative thing, it's actually quite a positive thing. As long as you can set your parameters, that you are still objective. You know, yeah, there are some dangers, I had a big discussion a year or so ago on my blog about, I used to still do blogs, um, um, on you know, political impartiality and things of all the fact that if you've got a closed Facebook account and you're in a politically restricted position, is it acceptable to put something political on your Facebook? And you know, that's a very big question that nobody really has an answer to, but I think that, that does come into that, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah. We're not supposed to be stopped. Did we achieve anything? Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't really
I think the other point was about kind of getting the geeks to talk to the senior managers to kind of pair pair the clubs with people. I think you were saying I thought that was a really good, good idea, especially about things that come out of today. Every geek have a manager. Yes, every manager. Only a nice manager. <laughs> and somebody with a budget. Yeah. Ask if they get a budget, the answer's no, don't you? Well, it's all the other side, though, sorry. It would be to say, to be fair, you know, I don't own any of this. So if somebody wanted to do a local golf camp and try their damnedest to get lots of budget orders and things like that tomorrow, I think I'm thinking of trying something on a smaller scale, just within the organisation, kind of just kind of yeah, yeah doing a camp and just getting senior managers to yeah, just yeah. try and do this format, see what happens. Just I think I think we should do suit camp. Yes, yeah, suit camp <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, and then what well, suit camp and then <laughs> converse camp for the frontline workers. Just a, an ex uh, perhaps a, an example of how it could be if it was new camp. In Birmingham, we have these things called. And they've tried, they, they sometimes label bits of it. The, um, this is the unconference bit, and you just. <laughs> <laughs> well, what well, they did this year, a residence, much more social community event, was tagged on in the afternoon of, and actually, for just talking about would you get senior managers, actually, many senior managers did go to that and took their suits off and came in a. In a uh, because it ran over the Saturday. It was a Friday and a Saturday, so they came on the Saturday. They didn't put public clothes on. Yes, yes. They didn't. But actually, the, the big thing that people said, because they ran together, that actually they came the next day yeah. in a different context. But I and really enjoyed that they were able to. So there is that sort of thing we're winning. I think that's just signal right together. Yes. Are you? And we're getting jet dangerously close to having them out. Aren't we? That yeah. yeah. I think that would be the chance. In fact, yeah. we just, we just uh, see the managers are being portrayed as suits because quite a lot of them are not. Quite a lot of them. <laughs> just, no, uh, the, guy, the, guy, the guy that I, the uh, guy uh, from Maidstone Council, would have still probably been at the pub now, and he would have turned up and done two or three presents. He's not a suit. You know, he's he's a senior manager with you know a lot of innovation, a lot of budget, but he's not. Yeah. And that's the thing. That that increasingly, that generation is in charge. Yeah, well, I mean, the same, the the same, that generation is probably what? Early 40s. Yeah. Did we change that? No, we should now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, everyone go and do what you want? So, 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 so what's my takeaway from this? Yeah. I, I need to know. Take away whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs>